Today we're going to take this lovely photo and turn it into a beautiful oil painting. All you need is Affinity Photo, no paint required. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can download this image from the link in the video description. Now, before we start, I want to let you know that this process will be a lot easier if you use a drawing tablet, but you can also just use a mouse if you'd like. So we'll be using a few different steps throughout this process to get the oil paint look. Our first step will take a bit of time, but it's actually pretty easy. To do this easy step, we'll first duplicate our layer by pressing Command or Control J. Using this layer, we're going to be smudging the image to start creating an oil paint effect. So I'm going to come over here and select our smudge brush. Then we need to pick out a brush to use to create this effect. I'll come to my brushes panel and then where it says basic, I'll press down. You can see that Affinity comes with so many great brushes and you can go into any of these categories and find great brushes to achieve a similar effect. Feel free to play around with any of these brushes, but I'm going to show you which one I'll be using. Go to the oils category and then go to the fifth brush down, which is called large fibers oil. I'll press on this brush to select it. I also want to customize this brush for our purposes. So I'm going to double click on this brush to open up its settings. I'll come to the dynamics and you can feel free to change up any of these settings. I think originally the accumulation and flow is all the way up. I'm going to go ahead and bring those down. You can also see that we have a little bit of size jitter which will gradually make the brush smaller or larger depending on your pressure that you're using. If you're not using a drawing tablet, you might just want to change this to none. I'll go ahead and close out of this. And now with our brush all set up, we can begin painting. So with the smudge brush, it allows you to just click and drag and you can see that the colors in that area will be smudged into this brush-like look. I think using the smudge brush is a great tool to have because you don't need to sample colors as you go. All you need to do is click and drag and you'll be smudging your colors. To start using this effect, I'm just going to use small strokes all across the forehead. Now, if you want to keep more details in your image, like by the eyes, be sure to lower your brush size. You can do this using the bracket keys on your keyboard. And if you want a more obvious effect, feel free to make your brush a lot bigger and you can see the difference of the strokes. You'll cover a lot more area and the effect will be even more obvious. Now, I want to point out that the direction that you're stroking in matters, and this will take some practice. I know this took me a few tries to get right. We want to paint to emphasize the curves of the face and later the body. So, for example, around the eyes, I'm trying to go in the direction of the eye shape. So I'm going horizontally around the eye. For the nose, I'm also going to do this, tracing around the nostril to kind of emphasize that area. Again, this takes some practice. So if you're ever not sure, feel free to duplicate your layer again and just try out painting in a direction to see if it looks good. 
If you like it, you can keep painting on that layer. And if you don't, you can just delete that duplicate layer. I'm going to continue to paint on the face. When you come to a place where two very different colors meet, be sure to go in the direction of where the colors meet. So I'm just going to go right parallel along with these colors because I don't want to risk smudging the red into the skin. That's not going to look right. I'm just going to slowly do small strokes going parallel with where these points meet. Then once you have the outline done, you can go ahead and go in whatever direction you want. When you get to the arms, be sure to go in downward strokes. The first time I did this, I did horizontal strokes, and it made the arms look a bit strange, like they were disconnected instead of nicely flowing together. So that's just a tip I picked up. Be sure to go downward for the limbs. Alright, I've now finished doing the effect for the body. I think this looks so good. Here's the before and after so far. Now, right now, if you zoom out quite a ways, it might look like this is just a normal image. I think something that makes a big difference with this effect is when we do this to the background and the hair. And I'm also going to do some fun things with this furry clothing by making it go out a little more wild and crazy than it looks right now. And I think that'll really help to make this look like a painting. So to start, let's work with this fuzzy clothing. I'm just going to click and drag in an outward direction for all of it. And I'm going to extend it past where it originally goes. By starting where the clothing is fuzzy and then pulling outward, we'll be pulling the white color. If you pulled from the skin inward, then you would be pulling the skin color in. So make sure that you're starting from the source, the white clothing, and then pulling outward. All right, that looks nice and dramatic. <laughs> I'm just going to fill in this area down here a little more, pulling the white paint over. All right, very nice. Next, I'll move on to doing the hair and this earring. Now for the earring, I'm just going to make my brush about the same size as each of these pearls. And then I'm just going to slowly press down and jiggle back and forth to kind of blur it up. All right, I think that looks better, a bit more painted. All right, finally, we'll move on to the hair. Now, I think this will make a huge difference because human hair naturally has a lot of little flyaway hairs throughout it. But as we're doing these paint strokes, we'll get rid of a lot of those hairs and it'll look more painted.
for the background, I'm going to make my brush nice and large. And then I'm just going to go in circular directions, kind of trying to mix the hair little flyaways with the background. All right, so that smudging definitely takes some time to do, but take a look at the results. Here's the before and the after. Now it's time to clean up our image even more and add more painterly brush strokes throughout it. So first I'm going to duplicate the layer we've been painting on by pressing Command or Control J. Then I'm going to switch to our brush tool by pressing B on my keyboard. And I'll go ahead and select this large fibers oil brush again. Now that we're using the paintbrush, we're going to have to do a bit of a different technique. I'm going to go to my color panel. Then all I need to do is decrease the size of my brush and then hold down Alt or Option on my keyboard and click in an area to sample that color. You can see over here that the color of paint that I'm using for my paintbrush changes every time I click in a new area. So now with these sampled colors, we can begin to add even more highlight or shadow in different areas. However, I want to make this subtle so I'm going to lower the flow of my paintbrush so that I'm just gradually adding these colors in. That still looks pretty intense to me. So I'm going to go to my brushes and double click on our paintbrush. Then I'll go to its general settings and I'll decrease the flow. That's a bit better. But even if my flow's at zero, it seems to still be painting. That's not quite right, so I'll double click on this brush again. And under the dynamics, I'll go ahead and change the flow jitter. I think that'll help. If you're not using a pressure sensitive tablet, you can change this to velocity. And then however fast you're painting, you can change how much flow of your paintbrush you'll be applying. Ah, there we go. So all we needed to do was change the brush settings and change the flow around here, and that seemed to fix the problem. So right now, I'm just strategically adding highlights to areas to brighten up the face. Any areas where we have extreme contrast, like this light area and this dark area, will really help to make this look painterly because we're not perfectly blending all of these areas together. Right now, I'm just trying to add highlight anywhere where there naturally is a bit of highlight. Next, I'm going to add some shadows. I'll go ahead and start with the hair. I want to select a very dark color. As I was smudging the hair, it seems that we lost a lot of this depth, the darkness of the hair. So I definitely want to bring more of that back in. I think adding all of these shadows and highlights might have been a bit too much, so I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer. There we go. To finish off this paint effect, I want to add in some texture. Oil paintings are done on woven canvases, and I want this to have that woven look. So I have this image pulled up. You can also find this image in the video description. I'll copy this by pressing Command or Control C. Then I'll return to our document and press Command or Control V to paste it in. 
I'll select the Move tool, and then I can stretch this out so that it fits onto our canvas. Now to blend this into our painting, I'm going to change the blend mode. I'm going to choose multiply. You can see very clearly that we have that woven effect. So I think this is a good blend mode to use. However, with the woven detail being this intense, right now it kind of looks like we just printed this image onto the canvas instead of directly painting paint onto the canvas. So I want to lower the opacity to around 30%. That keeps the texture, but it does still look like we have brush strokes directly on our canvas. Now, when we added this texture, it actually made the image darker. So to finish this off, I'm going to come to our adjustments and then add a curves adjustment. And I'm just going to brighten up the image a bit. There we go. And I'd say that's looking great. I'm going to hold down shift to click on all of our layers. And now we can see the before and the after. I know this takes a lot of practice, but look at the results. Great work. If you want to learn our affinity workflow, then check out the free course below.